Today, let's talk about five unique or weird Switch games that we have in our collection. Billion Road. The only way I can sum this one up is to say it's a cross between Monopoly and Mario Party. Sort of. The goal is to take over all of Japan and dominate the business world like a tycoon. I got this game as a joke gift because I used to be in real estate, but this game is actually pretty fun. If you enjoy games like Dokopan Kingdom or board game like party games, I suggest giving this one a try. Heck, it's even fun to play alone just because it is so weird. The premise is the same as most board games. Make the most money and you win. How do you make money? By investing in properties like sushi restaurants, daikon radish farm, amusement parks, game stores, and so many more. Seriously, this game is so creative and has so many options, it's hard to get tired of this one. The board is the entire country of Japan with all the major cities, and the investment opportunities match what those cities and towns are famous for. It's really cool, especially if you are familiar with Japan, but even if you're not, you are bound to start learning more with this game in a fun way. However, all that isn't what makes this game unique. The unique part of this game lies in the events and the monsters you are picking up along the way. Yeah, there are over 50 monsters in this game which you can recruit into your party. They all have unique abilities and you can have three in your party at all times. You can even change them out as you meet new monsters. Most of them help you win with abilities like stealing properties from opponents or reducing the money you lose in events, but there are a few that can really hurt your chances of winning. You can have more than three monsters, but that usually comes with the end of the year event where the winners and losers of the year get additional monsters that either help or hinder them. Also, there are boss monsters that randomly show up and start destroying Japan. Why does that matter? Because they might just be in a neighborhood where you invested a lot of money in properties. So send your monsters up to battle it out and try to take down the boss before they can do some major damage. There are multiple modes to play on, hidden maps to unlock, and heck, you might even learn a thing or two about investing money this game has a physical that was released by Limited Run a while back, but the digital version is available in the eShop for $19.99. I highly suggest giving this game a try. Oh, Little Inferno. This game definitely comes to mind when I think unique. Not sure many developers could pull off a whole game where you sit in front of a fireplace the entire time and burn things, and manage to still make a storyline that feels creepy, like you are a part of some future dystopia where the world is freezing over. Also, where are the parents? But let's talk gameplay. Like I said, you are a kid burning things in a fireplace, a special fireplace. As you burn things, you unlock catalogs where you can order more things to burn. While you are burning things, you are unraveling a strange tale of what is going on in the world outside your cozy, warm home and making a new friend through the mail because they smelled your fireplace. Let's play you the theme song just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. It's One might play this game for the story alone to find out what's really going on or 
you might play this game to get all the combos as those are fun puzzles to solve. Either way, this game is one of the most unique games I have played and I love it. Matter of fact, it's a family favorite. This game has a physical that was released years ago by Super Rare, but you can also buy this game in the eShop for $14.99. I just saw it has some holiday DLC for $4.99, and I think we'll be picking that up soon just to rekindle our love for this game. Pun intended. Miitopia. This game puts a unique spin on adventure game using me characters you have saved on your Switch. You can cast your friends, family, or anyone you want in this quirky RPG. I was a big fan of Tomodachi Life on the 3DS, and this game looked similar, so I picked it up. While I'm not sure I would say this game is weirder than Tomodachi Life, cause that game is really weird, but this game is unique in its own right. Also, I think they tried to give this game more substance with a story and adventure that feels less random, but still has random components, if that makes sense. There's a lot to explore in this game when it comes to relationships, reactions, side stories, etc. You give your main character and party members their own personality type. Think simplified The Sims. Then you determine which me they will look like or make a new one on the spot. Then you choose their job and they have some fun jobs to choose from like chef and pop star, along with the regulars like Warrior and Mage, but there are many more to unlock, which is part of the fun. Each character has their own desires, favorite foods, and will start dialogue with the other characters randomly while out adventuring, and it's fun to see how it all plays out. Interactions between me's can result in an increase in the relationship meter or possibly go negative and result in a quarrel. While most of the relationship stays on the friend side, things do eventually get kind of romantic. However, there is no marriage in this game. But fun fact, this game has an 18 plus rating in Russia due to the same sex relationships. I should mention that this game was originally released on the 3DS, but the Switch version added wigs and makeup for the Miis along with outing tickets that allow the characters to go out together to places like the cinema, a cafe, or the seaside, and these outings help increase relationships further. You also eventually get a horse in the game, which is new, and some new events have been added as well. The physical version of this game is pretty readily available, and the digital version is $49.99 in the eShop. There is a demo available for download if you just want to give it a try first. Prinny 1 and 2 Exploded and Reloaded This bundle is a unique platforming adventure game. If you have watched some of our other videos, you may have noticed I am a big fan of Nippon Ichi software and mainly the Diskea series. However, this game does a 360 from other Disgaea titles because most Disgaea games are strategy RPGs, and this is a 2D side-scrolling high-octane platformer. In this game, you play as the Prinny. Yes, they are the main character just as the title implies in the first game of the bundle. Can I really be the hero? Yes, you can, Prinny! And it's their job to track down Master Etna's ultimate dessert. This game might seem easy at first glance, but I assure you, it's no walk in the park. You pretty much find this out on the first boss. In the second game, titled Dawn of Operation Panties, they give you not just an easy mode, but baby mode. I'm not sure if this is them recognizing the first game was hard or an insult to me for being so bad at this. Both games have solid platforming, 
flashing bad guy, building combos gameplay, along with hilarious dialogue and some really weird, memorable story moments. I think this is a great way to get into the Disgaea universe and get a taste of the Netherworld's famous characters and sense of humor. These games were first released on the PSP, but these HD remasters have better graphics and all the DLC released for the PSP versions. There is a physical for this game, which is on the rare side, but you can buy this in the eShop for $33.99. And Nippon Ichi holds sales pretty often for all their titles on the Switch, so you could always add it to your wish list and get it later. WarioWare, get it together. This one is the final game on today's list because I know most of you are probably familiar with how weird WarioWare games are, but still, you can't talk about unique Switch games and not mention Wario. WarioWare games are made up of what they call micro games, and this installment has over 200 micro games. Each version of WarioWare has their own twist on the same formula, and with this one, each character has their own distinct talents. So for example, Wario has a jetpack on, and he will rush forward in whatever direction you are facing. Another character can't move at all, but will shoot in any direction. Part of the added challenge is memorizing the controls of each character. However, in this one, you get to choose a party of three characters to tackle the micro game. So that makes it easy, right? The point of the game is to beat each of the micro games as quickly as possible with whatever character has been randomly chosen for you. Since there are so many micro games, you might think you finally have a few down, but then they will throw a new one at you that you've never seen before. It's really about figuring out what you need to do to win in the quickest amount of time as possible. Sounds easy enough until the timer keeps speeding up as you progress. You'll notice lots of flying Wario noses, garlic, different art styles, silly micro game, and just a lot of baffling moments that will make you say, what did I just see? I love the WarioWare games and have been playing them since the GBA, but the all-time favorite in our house is WarioWare Gold on the 3DS. One last thing I like about this Switch installment is no gimmicks. That means no motion control, no pointing to the screen, no drawing. It's just a normal game, Wario style, and I appreciate that. You can find this game in retail stores or online pretty readily, but it's also available in the eShop for $49.99. Well, that's all I have for today, but I'd love to hear what weird and unique Switch games you would recommend. And if you like this video, give a thumbs up so I know that there might be interest in making more of these in the future. Of course, a subscribe always helps us too. Till next time, have fun and stay weird.